Hi, this is Tammy Valenta. Today we're going to talk about clinical decision making and nursing diagnosis. So let's start with what is health assessment. Well, it is the first step of the nursing process and it's the systematic collection, organization, and evaluation of data about a patient's state of health and wellness. It's the RN's responsibility to gather objective and subjective data to make different changes in the patient's plan of care and to make sure that that plan of care and changes are um, recorded and relayed to other members of the healthcare team. This assessment is mandated by the Joint Commission for Accreditation of Healthcare Organizations, otherwise known as JCO. Two of the main responsibilities of an RN in acute care is to manage nursing care and monitor the medical condition. Assessment is the point of entry into the nursing process and we begin with subjective and objective data. Subjective data is what the patient says typically during the history or while you're questioning them about a symptom. And objective data is the physical exam, which includes inspection, percussion, palpation, and auscultation, and lab data and other diagnostic tests. Components of the database include subjective and objective data. Your lab data will be your most objective data because it is the most quantifiable. The links between the health history and physical exam need to be recognized in order to, to develop a diagnosis and treatment plan for your patient. This is done through diagnostic reasoning, critical thinking, and the nursing process. Diagnostic reasoning involves gathering information including signs and symptoms and diagnostic data such as lab data and x-ray results to form a hypothesis or in other words to determine what needs to be done for a patient. The nursing process includes six phases, assessment, diagnosis, outcome identification, planning, implementation, and evaluation. This process is a scientific method used by nurses to ensure the quality of patient care. Assessment includes not only physiological data, but also psychological, sociocultural, spiritual, economic, and lifestyle factors as well. For example, a nurse's assessment of a hospitalized patient in pain includes not only the physical causes and manifestations of pain, but the patient's response. For example, an inability to get out of bed, refusal to eat, withdrawal from family members, anger directed at hospital staff, fear, or request for more pain medication. The nursing diagnosis is the nurse's clinical judgment about the client's response to actual or potential health conditions or needs. The diagnosis reflects not only that the patient is in pain, but that the pain has caused other problems such as anxiety, poor nutrition, and conflict within the family, or has the potential to cause complications. For example, respiratory infection is a potential hazard to an immobilized patient. The diagnosis is the basis for the nurse's care plan. The process of sorting and analyzing the subjective and objective data for the identification of an actual problem or potential problem is called creating a nursing diagnosis. I can't stress strongly enough that again when talking about the nursing diagnosis, it is dealing with the human response to actual or potential health problems and life processes. It needs to be an issue that can be modified by nursing interventions. When we talk about nursing diagnosis, we use the NANDA approved nursing diagnosis, which you'll see posted on Canvas and also in your textbook. The guidelines to writing a nursing diagnosis include never write anything that suggests that another member of the healthcare team is at fault or to blame, or that the patient is bad or foolish or also at fault. When writing a nursing diagnosis, we write it in a three-step process problem, etiology, and then signs and symptoms. So we start with a diagnostic label 
related to whatever is causing or contributing to that diagnosis as evidenced by whatever the signs and symptoms. In the next few slides, we'll, we'll go through this process. For example, a diagnostic label or nursing diagnosis is to be stated in NANDA specific terms. One example would be constipation. It is um, stated in the terms of a human response, not a patient need. The second step to writing the nursing diagnosis will be to add the contributing factors or etiology. So these are the related to issues. For example, we started with the diagnostic label constipation. Now we'll add the etiology, which would be added with the related to inadequate fluid intake, low fiber diet, and decreased activity. We can also look at the etiology as being secondary to a medical diagnosis. However, it is not the primary medical diagnosis. You can't write constipation related to paralysis. However, you could write constipation related to decreased activity secondary to paraplegia. Okay, so when writing the nursing diagnosis, we started with the diagnostic label related to whatever etiology. So we started with constipation related to decreased uh, gut motility. And now we're going to state the evidence, the signs and symptoms, such as um, decreased bowel sounds or no BM for three days. Okay, this is just an example, again, of constipation. We went into etiology related to inadequate fluid intake or low fiber diet or decreased activity or all of the above. And then um, the signs and symptoms are the as evidenced by the patient's complaints of abdominal discomfort and no BM for five days. With outcome identification, we're looking at the patient's possible outcomes. They're generally described as the patient condition will improve, the patient's condition will stabilize. Um, they're individual, patient-centered, and must have a time frame. The next step is planning. And based on the assessment and diagnosis, the nurse sets measurable and achievable short and long range goals for their patient that might include moving from bed to chair at least three times a day, maintaining adequate nutrition by eating smaller, more frequent meals, etc. The implementation phase is where the nurse follows through on the decided plan of action. So this plan is specific to the patient focuses on achievable outcomes. And actions involved in the nursing care plan include monitoring the patient for signs or change of improvement, um, directly caring for the patient or performing necessary medical tasks, educating and instructing the patient about further health management, and referring or contacting the patient for follow-up. Implementation can take place over the course of hours, days, weeks, or even months. Evaluation is the last step of the nursing process. Once all nursing intervention actions have taken place, the nurse completes an evaluation to determine if the goals have been met. If they've not been met then, and the patient has not shown improvement, then the wellness goals were not met and the nurse begins the process all over again. Clinical decision making is the process by which we determine who needs what and when. We don't want to base it on assumptions, so we need to make sure that we're not taking information for granted and that we are based in fact. We use a systematic and organized approach, such as nursing process. We need to validate our information by checking for accuracy and making sure that our data is reliable. And we need to know whether the signs and symptoms are normal or abnormal. When making clinical decisions, we're drawing inferences or valid conclusions based on clustering our cues of data. That's when we're taking in the information, the signs and symptoms. 
So the symptoms of what does a patient tell us and then the signs, what do we actually see? And are these relevant observations or relevant information that we're putting together? And if they are, are they consistent? Or is what the patient telling us, is that different or the same as what we're actually seeing with our own eyes? When gathering information, we want to look at the whole picture. For example, say that through your history you gather the following cues. Your patient complains of having to urinate frequently in large amounts. They've lost weight recently, but they have a voracious appetite, and their vision has become blurred over the past few weeks. These are different clues or cues that we could cluster, and that would lead us to what other information do we need to know. So what information might we ask? Well, we could ask, are you thirsty all the time? Have you noticed a change in your appetite? Is there a history of diabetes in your family? If the patient is diagnosed with diabetes and given a prescription for metformin, then we can look at a risk factor, which could be, for example, abdominal pain related to a daily prescription of metformin. The at-risk diagnosis does not have signs or symptoms to verify its validity like a nursing diagnosis would, but it is definitely a risk. So when looking at risk diagnosis, we're identifying actual and potential risks by looking at the data in the chart, both medical and nursing um, data. And then the nursing diagnosis is a clinical judgment about the person's response to an actual or potential health state. Evidence-based practice is the systematic approach to practice that emphasizes the use of best evidence in combination with the clinician's experience as well as patient preferences and values to make decisions about care and treatment. Um, stated by Sackett in 1996, it is the conscientious, explicit, and judicious use of current best evidence in making decisions about the care of the individual patient. It means integrating individual clinical expertise with the best available external clinical evidence from systematic research. The quote of the week is, a decision is made with the brain, a commitment is made with the heart. Therefore, a commitment is much deeper and more binding than a decision. Thanks for listening.